Hey folks, it's IOE Thrown back with some more World of Tanks. As you can see, this is Extreme Unicorn Warfare. And once again, he is in the T95 FV4201 Chieftain. Ooh, look at that beautiful camo. Um, I, I, I want it. it. It's quite pretty. Anyway, so, um, we saw this tank first time on the channel. Like, few days ago like a week ago or so and um and then just yesterday um or maybe the day before i don't really remember um <laughs> extreme sends me this tells me he's got another replay for me and this time i need to see it so the last one he wasn't really proud of it was like his second game he enjoyed it he thought it was a good game but this is a game he's really proud of apparently it's a lot harder to play the tank now as people now know his weaknesses. And so, this is a, a game a lot more attuned to how you should be playing it. And, uh, you know, just a game he's proud of the tactics of and stuff like that. So, we're going to get on into it. If I haven't mentioned it, it's a tier 10 game on Westfield. Um, I don't think I mentioned that. I, I meant to. I should have. I should have, obviously. As the artillery comes in and is the bane of that poor Ferdinand, who stood no chance. Ooh, T30 getting hit. Now there's three artillery per team. Three. Not, not, not three. But anyways, um... Ooh, yeah, nice shot into the J Panzer E100. Yagzilla gets itself tagged. I mean, if he's going to keep coming over that ridge line, he's going to keep showing us that lower glacis, and we're going to keep shooting it. Because where else are you going to shoot on that thing? Um, that is the best spot. Ooh, side of an I-7 turret. Unfortunately, not able to go through it. Just not able to find a flat piece of armor to shoot at. And that is going to be the key with that tank. If you're shooting at an IS-7, you really need to be shooting at a flat part. Um, in order to make sure you're going through it. Or, it's a very weak spot like the lower glacis, which is relatively flat. IS-3, though, he can pretty much point and click on. Because that thing is never going to be able to uh, hold up. Armor wise, the only part of that thing that will is at the pike and the front of the turret. And that's only if we're shooting at it at the exact right angles. Um, but right now we're not. <laughs> we're just <laughs> popping up the ridge line and doing damage. I have seven's trying to follow us. I assume he's trying to get a shot in on us. And um, he just keeps being baited all the way over this ridge line and getting himself shot in the side. Unfortunately for the IS-7, he also got hit by something else, and ooh, that's not an IS-7. That is a Conqueror not paying attention. <laughs> Conqueror's like, hmm, this was a bad plan. Yeah, you bet it was. <laughs> Unfortunately, Conqueror's going to have a really hard time getting out of this, because the Conqueror's only decent spot is up on top of the ridge line. As soon as he's pulling back off the ridge, um, he basically puts himself in a worse and worse spot. That was an interesting ricochet. I would have thought that would have gone in easily. So it turns out, nope. T10 apparently trying to follow in the um, the Conqueror's footsteps. Has got himself into an awkward situation. He's going to have a hard, difficult time getting out of. As he gets himself tracked now, uh, we should reload in time to take him out, assuming we're aimed. When nope. Looks like our E4 does the job instead. E4 is coming around behind, had a better shot anyway. It's okay. So I don't think we're going to get too many kills in this battle. We're just going to do a bunch of damage. Oh no, we're going to kill an IS-3. Look at that. Oh, I was almost a bomb <laughs> I'm bombarder. Bombardier, that's the one. I was almost a bombardier by the E100. Uh, the w e uh, GW100. Um, we're going to speed this up because the only thing left over here is potentially a WZ and he's not actually anywhere close by. So zipping down this road, we're going to try and look for shots on that T44. I'm not going to find them unless we push a lot farther forward because of the way the hill works. Firing at I think he took out something. I don't think it was a T44 though. Um, looking at, you can actually get shots on this T28. He doesn't realize we're there until it's way too late. 
and that's a dead T28 prototype. Um, artillery will of course know we're here because of T28 spying us and the mod 1 will stay behind cover. He'll be okay because of that. Uh, there's only two real tanks left on the enemy team. Well, I guess te technically one's a tank destroyer, but eh. still, so, ooh, nice shot on the run. Puts one in, and if you've been firing actual ammo instead of the explosive ammo, then uh, that would have gone a little bit better as far as the whole doing damage thing goes. Ooh, nice shot. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't pen. It just flashes over him. Because if it had penned, it would have definitely killed him. And though we're getting nailed by artillery. So apparently, um, artillery doesn't want to go ahead and kill stuff. Because if it hit the Type 4, it'd kill it. If it hit the VK over there, it'd kill it. No, instead it wants to splash us and do random bits of damage. That, uh, that Wolfenjoy is still alive, and he's actually just killed two of our teammates in quick succession, though. So that was probably two shots. Boom, boom. And that guy is doing his team a lot of credit. Because um, if he's careful enough, he can actually take out the Type 4. Or even the Ferdinand. Um, and start to pull this back for his team. Not that I don't think he can win this. But, I mean, anytime you can get a kill when you're the last one, you know, when the last tank's left to have on your team. That is a good thing. Oh, for you, of course. Not so good for the enemy team. Oh, again, a shot doesn't go through. Otherwise, it probably would have killed him. Or that was an extreme low roll. As we go... Oh, there he is. And that is a dead Wolf and Dragon. We're not even going to get a second shot before a whole bunch of shots are going to rain in on him. Yeah, there we go. I was <laughs> like, wait a second. Why is nobody shooting him? Uh, actually, it was because the 430 couldn't see him. I'm guessing the Scorpion G and the Type 4 were maybe reloading. I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened, but either way, that is game, and it was a well-done game. Um, the, obviously, raising his his uh, uh, cannon and victory. Well done, sir. Um, it was a great game. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Let's just go see what his post battle results were. Ace Tanker, not the worst surprise. Spotter, Hand of God, Bruiser, Fire for Effect, Nine Bonds, Patrol Duty, Confederate, and High Caliber. You know, the amount of times you can get a Patrol Duty and a High Caliber in the same game um, is very, very low. We're not surprised with Confederate. He definitely fired at enough people to get that. But getting a Patrol Duty and a High Caliber... It's rare, but 1,500 base experience. Wow, that has got to put that game in the, one of the top 10 of the channel of all time by experience earned. And this was definitely one for the record books. Um, just well done. He spotted most of his own damage. That's why his experience is so high. This is not astronomical damage, but uh, it's definitely not the highest damage on the channel. But the fact is that he spotted all his own shots and spotted a bunch for everybody else and that is the reason his damage his experience is so high well done um just all together unfortunately didn't make any money but considering he was firing all gold and he didn't lose a ton of money it's not bad either uh, actually if he'd had a credit reserve rolling he probably would have made cash uh, so well done sir thank you so much for saying this in extreme thank you all for watching um and i'll see you next time this is ioe threat